the, the great fear leading up to co-education was that the arrival of women would, would undermine the honor system. That was the one thing that was tossed around the most. Ernie Earn only agreed to become the Dean of Admissions on the condition that Edgar promised him that he would push for co-education because Ernie uh, clearly identified that um, a, a, a better, smarter, more academically accomplished group of students could be assembled for the university if it was co-ed and there was, you know, the other half of the country you could, um, you could recruit to attend and he wasn't interested in that job unless he was assured that over time they were gonna work on that together. Well, he didn't have a lot of time to put the class together, of course, because he, it was very short notice as to, uh, to that the school was gonna finally come co-ed. Um, and his theory was, if I get uh, young women who were very active in their high schools, um, everything from you know president of their class or yearbook editor um captain of the cheerleading squad i um, mean just a, 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 all kinds of backgrounds but but all very very active women that when they arrived at the university they would not see any any barriers he followed up with each each student he was considering admitting he told us he called the guidance counselor or some equivalent person, the head of the school at every single one of those high schools to, to try to ascertain and drill down on that student and to, to, to try to gauge whether he thought each of us could handle what he anticipated would be a lot of pressure and a lot of stress in a, in a challenging situation. I'm not sure in the end it was all that challenging for the reasons that Patty has described. Um, there were certainly some challenges and, and we can talk about those, but um, he was really careful in crafting that class because he knew as it played out for us, it would have a ripple effect for years to come in terms of the experience of women on grounds. And um, I, I think that's true. I, I gotta put in a word for Edgar Shannon. He was a wonderful, wonderful um, captain of the ship at a time when, I mean, it, it storms from all sides. Um, he was um, a, a very intelligent, thoughtful um, person who, by the way, had five daughters. So, I mean, he was all for co-education. Um, and and that, that helped, a, a really good president for the time. Um, and a receptive atmosphere. I can, really can't think of any um, academic um, uh, barriers um, that were placed that were up there for women. Um, in the area of, of, of housing, um, again, except for the fact that we had bathrooms that hadn't been converted yet um the the women were treated just like the men um they we had we didn't have house mothers or sign-in sheets or or things like that. i think a lot of women's dorms around the country had all of the women that first year and really for a couple of years i believe it was the third year when when um admissions became gender blind that they began to house some first year women in the old dorms. I think that's the year, certainly by our fourth year they were. Um, but the first two years, women lived only in the Alderman Road dorms, Observatory Hill dorms, uh, and not the Emmett, the so-called old dorms. Then you began to interact with women in class, in groups, in clubs, and extracurricular activities. There, there were some honorary societies that quickly co-educated and at least one of them reverted and became all men at some later point. And that, it, it, <laughs> it was stunning to me. I'm like, why would you ever do that? Why would you go backwards, right? The Cavalier Daily is one of the 
very first to absolutely welcome women. Um, every bulletin board I saw had a sign up, come join the Cavalier Daily. The CD had a much more liberal, progressive uh, editorial staff, and they started taking a very strong um, anti-war position, favoring co-education, uh, pushing for civil rights. And this sort of came out of the blue, again, just showing how things were changing. Ann and I both worked on the Cavalier Daily from pro probably our first week at the university. It was one of the most welcoming organizations. And um, the Cavalier Daily was, was kind of a, a, a central clearinghouse for all the information about protests or petitions or um, what was going on at the university. It was a, for us, it was a great introduction to the university. Most of the organizations that are truly influential um, remain co-ed today, I think. That's my observation. But, you know, when our, the spring of our third year rolled around and we were, some of us were applying to live on the lawn, uh, of that cohort of about, I think there were, what, 51 rooms on mm -hmm. the lawn and the, and the cracker box, I guess, um, 14 of those rooms went to women our fourth year, which is uh, a strong indication of the degree to which we had not only gotten active in organizations, but had risen into leadership roles. I think there's nothing that changed the university more than that. Nothing, nothing's even close.